Hey everyone, it's Flackfire. So, Vin Zampella is now head of the Battlefield franchise. I have a lot of hope he can turn things around quickly for Battlefield 2042, but uh, the clock is ticking and he has his work cut out for him. While it is true that Battlefield 2042 has had solid sales, the game sold over 4.2 million copies, retaining players is proving to be a problem. The game has lost more than two-thirds of its player base on Steam. In fact, it's fast approaching the level of active Battlefield 5 players, which should definitely set off some alarm bells. While we don't have data on other platforms, that is still a huge red flag. The game is being review bombed on websites like Metacritic, and a quick canvas of social media or YouTube reveals that while a lot of people seem to have purchased the game, many of them don't like it or are disappointed with its current state. It's a story Battlefield fans are all too familiar with and have little patience for. So, how does someone turn things around from here? For this video, it's almost an open letter to Zampella, but I'm going to outline what I think needs to be done to redeem Battlefield 2042, as well as highlight some missteps that cost it dearly. So first of all, and I don't want to spend a lot of time on this because what's done is done, I would have waited another six months to release the game. In 2021, if your $70 AAA game isn't working right out of the gate, you're going to get rightfully lambasted on news and social media. Money is tight for many people at the moment thanks to the pandemic, and it just seems a far more intelligent decision to delay the game until March when you don't have to fight Call of Duty for the Christmas dollars. Many players were already burned by the launch of Battlefield 5, and repeating that will continue to degrade their relationship with the franchise further. Next, Battlefield 2042 needs to abandon this hard pivot to 128 players. When you log on to the game, you're given only two choices for the core game, 128 player conquest or 128 player breakthrough. This is incredibly narrow-minded, considering its unproven territory for the franchise. I have long said that bumping the player count in Battlefield was never the answer. It also isn't very welcoming to longtime fans of the series, and a risky move considering how unmanageable 128 players can be. I've played some of the smaller, temporary game modes DICE recently put out, and it is a much better experience. It should have been permanent from the beginning. Too many players probably gave 128 players a go, realized this ain't it, and put the game down or refunded it because there was simply no other option. So give players more game mode choices built into the UI. And yes, I know you can play 64 player games through Portal, but let's be real here, that's making players jump through multiple hoops, it's not supported via matchmaking for the main game, and it's not really a realistic option or a dependable one for most players. Third, I will continue to say this, specialists need an overhaul. I'm sure that EA has been hearing that quite a bit, and it's frustrating for us as fans when they blatantly don't listen. Having spent a good bit of time with specialists, I can see what DICE were trying to accomplish, but if it isn't broken, don't try to fix it. Bring back classes and team-specific character models. This is what Battlefield has been about since the beginning. There are already 10 specialists, so divide them into five classes and split them between the teams. Shift the focus to gadget selection and lock gadgets to particular classes. A huge problem with Battlefield 2042 is predictability, and it makes it incredibly frustrating to play. You have no idea what your enemies or even friendly players are capable of. Under this proposed class system, you can still unlock cosmetics for your favorite class and characters, even if they're locked by teams. And incidentally, this also fixes the issue of team identification that continues to be a problem. For example, instead of just relying on glow sticks, you can easily tell, hey, that's Falk and she's on the US team. It doesn't actually even really impact the lore of the game. You could even write around it as part of a new season where specialists choose sides, right? That is supposed to be one of the main purposes of this game. Next, Battlefield needs to bring back competition. The lack of a scoreboard is absolutely killing my interest in the game. 
Everything feels pointless. There is no motivation for me to do anything because it doesn't feel rewarding outside of the occasional kill streak. Points mean nothing, so you're only completing tasks out of habit, which is fine for veteran players, but it doesn't teach new ones how to be useful. I will also say that voice over internet protocol should have been included in the game at launch. I am glad that it is on the way, but I cannot comprehend how a team-based game deprives players of a way to effectively communicate. An argument has been made that these steps somehow reduce toxicity in the game. Uh, Spoiler alert, they don't. Rude people will always find a way to be rude. Spend those efforts on streamlining reporting and enforcement. And when I say that, actually enforce those things. Similarly, as it stands, there is no way for the community to effectively run esports competitions. Apparently, this was at some point a priority for Battlefield, right? Uh, with Battlefield 1, we had incursions, and eventually that game mode got scrapped, but keep in mind here, the esports community isn't even asking for specialized tools to be able to run tournaments. They are asking for the absolute minimum to support it. They will find ways to work around something to get something done. Uh, on that note, spectator mode is non-existent, and the lack of it in Battlefield 2042 is a massive detriment. It was a useful feature for esports, but it was also embraced by content creators who used it in incredible ways to promote previous Battlefield games. I would also love to see clan support return at some point, but it shouldn't be prioritized until other issues have been addressed. Matchmaking also needs an overhaul. As it stands right now, there are no persistent servers outside a portal. If you join a server and the game ends, you're put into a new server. This is detrimental to team play and chemistry with other players. One of the best parts of previous Battlefield games was learning to work together as a squad over the course of several games. I made many friends that way, and it adds to the social experience. With Battlefield 2042, you're simply yeeted into another server with random players after every match. Similarly, I can't join or leave squads. If I'm stuck playing with useless teammates who don't understand the point of the game is to attack an objective, I have no choice but to stay with them or leave the game. And that obviously adds to my frustration. The game also needs a server browser. Personally, I am fine with playing Manifest 10 times in a row. I love that map, but sometimes players want to play a specific map or want to avoid being matched into the same server that they just left for any number of reasons. For number six, make Hazard Zone free to play. This should have absolutely been done from the beginning. I don't know a single soul that bought Battlefield 2042 specifically to play Hazard Zone. If you're targeting Call of Duty's free-to-play players, then target them with a free-to-play game mode. I was sure that this lesson had been learned after Firestorm, yet here we are again. It would serve as a great introduction for new players to the Battlefield franchise, help make sure lobbies are populated, and it would certainly lead to additional sales, which is the end goal, right? Battlefield also needs a clear path forward for content. Right now, we have no dates and few details on what will be included in future expansions. One of the critiques has been weapon variety. Luckily, developers have already built a boatload of weapons for Portal. Why not release those at a steady trickle to ensure there's something always new for players to use in Battlefield 2042? It makes perfect sense from a lore standpoint. In the near future guerrilla conflict, soldiers would be using whatever they can get their hands on. And even if there's some weapon redundancy, players like having choice. You need only look at Battlefield 4 for proof of that. But I do want to stress that a clear path forward for content needs to be there. With Battlefield 5, we had no idea uh, what level of support the game was going to receive. And when you're talking about a game that is supposed to have free downloadable content, that can be a major deciding factor for if players want to pick up the game or remain with it. Eighth, Zampella needs to pick a direction for the game's tone. Right now, it's all over the place. 
in cooperation with Marcus Leto's Seattle studio, we are supposed to be getting a bunch of narrative-driven content for the Battlefield universe. It is hard to believe in the game when the game's lore is focused on failed states and refugees, but we have characters cracking jokes about how much coffee they drank or how they're better than everyone. It's one-dimensional, preposterous, and it breaks any emotional connection with the game. If you want me to spend money on cosmetics for characters, I've got to relate to them first. And those in Battlefield 2042, I do not. Next, I think dropping Battlefield's campaign was a short-sighted decision, as it provides the glue to hold the world together and illustrate the motivation for fighting on a deeper level. Give us meaningful voiceovers and cutscenes. At the moment, they are just painfully generic. And when it comes to future cosmetics, please dig a bit deeper than variations on color schemes and the rationale of, hey, this looks cool. Imbue them with narrative. Battlefield 1 actually did this on a meaningful level with the naming conventions of weapon camouflages, but it could be done so much better. Consider some kind of codex where players can at least explore the universe of Battlefield 2042 and piece together what is important to them. You're asking players to pick a side in Battlefield 2042. They don't have enough information to make an informed decision. Vince, if you ever want any ideas on this, my DMs are open to you. Next, DICE has been rapid firing updates to the game. That should continue, but they need to fix the frustrating issues that have plagued Battlefield 2042. Input lag is a consistent problem and the controls aren't dependable. At this point, I have lost count of how many times I have died because I hit the parachute button and it didn't open, or the game wouldn't let me exit a vehicle, or I couldn't switch weapons. Meanwhile, aim assist unreliable for console players, as is mouse input for those on PC. These are core aspects of the game that should be rock solid. We'll also say patches need more testing before release. Battlefield has a reputation of taking a step forward and two steps back with each patch, and that is a legacy that needs to be left behind. Finally, I realize all of these things that I've talked about up to this point in the video have no easy fix, okay? I'm not a game developer, but I do understand that we're talking significant work, probably more than the scope of Battlefield 2042 will allow at this point. The sad part about this, and perhaps the most frustrating part, is that I feel like much of this could have been avoided if EA had simply listened to the Battlefield community instead of placing so much emphasis on market data. Personally, I was not asked to give feedback on Battlefield 2042 during development. Uh, the vast majority of game changers that I know of were not consulted either, and I really think that shows in Battlefield 2042. I know that I'm probably stepping on some toes with this video, but here's the thing that Zampella, DICE, and EA need to understand. The Battlefield community has endured three years of Battlefield 5 marred with uncertainty, missteps, and broken promises. We were all hoping that Battlefield 2042 would be different. And I want to say that if it isn't, don't expect us to still be here when the next game rolls around. Battlefield used to be a leader in the FPS genre. It was unique. And over the last few years, the franchise has shifted to emulate other games instead of owning what it actually is. I've noticed this, and other fans have noticed. I do want to say that Battlefield 2042 still has the potential to be a good game. So, uh, Vince, EA, DICE, whatever you do going forward, listen to the community. Put down the spreadsheets, put down whatever market data you have, listen to the community and build this game into one that they can embrace. That's all I want to say for this video. Um, I would love to hear what your thoughts are. Make sure you tell me in the comments what you think about Battlefield 2042. Be as honest and transparent as possible. Uh, hopefully Vince, Dice, EA, whoever uh, will read the comments here and will get a good grasp on uh, what exactly they're missing in the formula that is Battlefield 2042. So tell me your thoughts down below in the comments. If you enjoyed this video, make sure you leave a like. If not, leave a dislike. 
If you want to support the channel, keep your money, share this video, and make sure to subscribe and tap the bell on your way out. Hopefully we'll have some more positive stuff to talk about with Battlefield 2042 in the future. And as always, thanks for watching.